This video is a introduction and then examples of one sample t-test for population mean. And we are gonna take a look at both z-tests and t-tests. Um, this video will deal with the z-test. So first off, we're gonna review the basic steps in a hypothesis test. Um, we already saw those for a population proportion, and now we're gonna look at the same basic structure um, but with a few differences for a test for a mean. So first thing we're gonna do is state our significance level alpha. So just like last time, that's typically gonna be either 0 0.01, 0 0.05, or 0 0.10. And the next thing we're gonna do is state our null and alternative hypotheses. This time remember that we're testing a population mean, not a population proportion. And so our null hypothesis is going to take the form mu equals mu sub zero for some value mu sub zero that we're testing, where mu is our population mean. And then we are gonna choose between our three alternative hypotheses. So the first is that the mean is not equal to mu sub zero. So that's a two-tailed test. Another alternative option is that the mean is greater than mu sub zero, which would give us a right-tailed test. And then our third option for the alternative is that the mean is less than mu sub zero, which would be a left-tailed test. Okay, the third step is to calculate our test statistic, just like it was for testing a population proportion. Um, this time though, there are two different test statistics depending on whether or not we know sigma, which is the population standard deviation. So if sigma, the population standard deviation is known, we're going to use a Z test statistic. This is the case that we're going to start with in this example on the next page. If sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown and we have to estimate it with the sample standard deviation, S, then we're gonna to switch to what's called a T distribution. And we haven't learned that yet, so we'll explain that in the next video, okay? Um, after we've calculated our test statistic, we're gonna determine the p-value for the test. Now the p-value, the way that we calculate that p-value is going to depend on what our alternative is. So I'm gonna draw out three cases here. So if we have a right-tailed test, so our, our alternative is that mu is greater than mu sub zero, then we're gonna end up with a p-value that is found by taking the area to the right of our test statistic. And that could be z or t, depending on which test um, we're doing. So there's our p-value. If we have a left-tailed test, then the p-value is gonna be found by taking the area to the left of our test statistic. And then finally, if we have a two-tailed test for our alternative, that means that whether we have a positive or negative value of our test statistic, we're gonna find the area that is more extreme than that test statistic on both sides. So again, these areas are equal because this is a standard normal distribution, symmetric about zero. And so you can find the area um, in one tail and multiply it by two or add the two areas together. But the p-value is gonna be the sum of those shaded areas, okay? Um, step five, we're gonna compare our p-value to that significance level alpha, alpha from step one. 
Step six, we're using the same decision criterion. So if our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null and conclude the alternative. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, we do not reject the null. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead to the next page and look at um, the last step and then at an example. So step seven is to write our conclusion. Um, we're gonna start by stating the significance level. So at the, whatever alpha is equal to, right? At the blank percent significance level, the data either provides or does not provide sufficient evidence to reject the null and conclude the alternative. Okay, um, so going into our example, um, it, I wanna make clear here that anytime we're doing a test for a population mean, um, our first step is to ask ourselves if we know the population standard deviation sigma. Um, if we do, then we're gonna use the z-test, which is like the following example. If we do not, that's where we would have to use a t-test instead. Okay, um, so step one here. If we read through the problem, it says researchers studied body temperatures of healthy humans in an effort to determine if the mean body temperature differs from 98.6 degrees. In a study, a sample of 93 healthy humans had a mean temperature of 98.1 degrees. Assume that sigma is 0.63 degrees and use a 1% significance level. So because we are given sigma, we're using a z-test. Step one is to find alpha, and we are given here alpha is 0 0.01. Step two is to state our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis is gonna be that the population mean body temperature is 98.6 degrees. That's no change or no difference from what's expected. And the alternative here, um, it just asks differs. And so the alternative is going to be that the mean is not equal to 98.6. Okay, so this is a two-tailed test. And our third step is to calculate the test statistic. So for that test statistic, we're gonna take our sample mean. We we're told that in our sample of 93 humans, the mean temperature was 98.1. And we're gonna subtract mu sub zero, that's the value we're testing against in the null hypothesis, that's 98.6. And we're gonna divide by sigma over the square root of the sample size, which was 93. And that's gonna give you a test statistic value of negative 7.65. Step four is we've got here our normal distribution, our standard normal distribution. We're way down here at negative 7.65. And we want the area down there as well as the area above positive 7.65. And that's because this was a two-tailed test, and so we need the sum of those two areas. That is essentially, if you look it up, zero. And I'll use approximately zero. Um, steps five and six, we're comparing our p-value to alpha. And remember, the rule is if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we reject that null. And in this case, our p-value is approximately zero, which is definitely less than 0.01. And so we are going to reject the null. And so finally, our last step here is to summarize. And we'll say at the 1% significance level, the data provides sufficient evidence to conclude the mean body temperature differs
from 98.6 degrees. 